There are some dangers that come with the right back policy of the buffer cache. A sudden system crash or power failure would mean that all the changes made in memory only would be lost. If the storage device is removable, it could just be that the user unplugged it before ejecting. It would be a nice idea if we could periodically copy all the changes reflected in memory to the disk. Maybe we could do this when some fixed number of dirty blocks is reached. The trouble is that the dirty blocks will likely be scattered all over the disk, and we would have to spend an inordinate amount of seek time just putting the right head of the disk in the correct place. Indeed, it's the seek time that makes random access to a disk so slow in general. Sequential access can be thousands of times faster than random access. It would be so much easier if we could just write everything to one contiguous block. This is the idea behind journaling file systems. They reserve a contiguous portion of the disk for this express purpose. We write the changes to the journal quickly and mark the dirty blocks in memory as clean. Then, at a more opportune time, we apply all these changes stored in the journal to the appropriate files on the disk. The name journal comes from the analogy to a diary that one might write in every day to record the changes in one's life in time sequential order. Here we are recording the changes to the file system. Of course, this does complicate reading from the disk somewhat. Any time we read from the disk, we need to check the journal to see if there are any changes to apply. Total time spent on writing is slower. After all, we are doing two writes instead of just one. The key is that the write to the journal is faster, and that is the one we are doing at the critical time when we found that we had too many dirty pages or blocks in memory. Journaling also has the advantage that it helps with crashes. Problems typically occur when a write to some important data structure, like an inode, is interrupted by some system crash or power failure. Let's consider what happens when a write from the journal to the rest of the disk is interrupted first. Well, in that case, the change that we need to apply will still be in the journal, and so we can just reapply it on restart. No problem. The other write to worry about is the write to the journal itself. A failed write to the journal, however, can be detected by a checksum, and then the change can simply be ignored, again leaving the important data structure on disk in a consistent state.